September 2nd, 2021. Wow. Um, lots happening. And uh, as always, we are going to uh, stand for a Pledge of Allegiance and take a moment of silence. I ask uh, continue to keep those that are in harm's way, uh, whether it be in Afghanistan or from Hurricane Ida and the aftermath, stay keeping our uh, friend and colleague, Mayor Rothenberg, in your uh, thoughts and prayers, and give uh, you know strength and courage to the family and the town of Mount Airy. May his memory always be a blessing at this time. So with that, let's stand. Okay, as I shared, uh, lots happening. And before we jump into our individual party carol, um, I would like to highlight the fact that it has been a loss to Carroll County and to uh, the town of Mount Airy with the passing of uh, Mayor Rockenberg um, earlier this week. And he has been uh, with us and the community for quite some time. So again, uh, wishing <clears throat> his memory always be a blessing to family and friends of both Carroll County and uh, Mount Airy. And if I can kind of go down, I think uh, Commissioner Boucher, if you'd like to uh, share some thoughts and also if uh, we don't know if we have somebody on the line or not, but let us know. Thank you, Commissioner. And I really appreciate those sincere words for it. Mayor Pat, as he was affectionately referred to, I've had the honor and privilege of working with Mayor Pat for the last three, three and a half years, so to speak. And I will state that he was always passionate about his town, his people. And even though there was contentious issues, he always found consensus. He brought people together to heal them. He was there during the COVID epidemic on all the policies and procedures and he maintained integrity, he made open communication with everyone. Uh, he brought people together in picnic environments. I had to work with him most recently on the Harrison Leisure property controversy, and he was an impeccable gentleman in how he handled the concerns of his constituents on such a controversial issue. And in a way, I'll state that he helped mentor me in that community because as the mayor of the town, he had a much greater grasp and understanding of the constituents than I did. And I'm humbled and honored to have worked with him. And I wish him eternal peace and peace to his family. Thank you, Mayor Rockenberg, and God bless you. Okay. Um, Commissioner Frazier? It's just, a, I guess, a very, very sad move for Carroll County. He was mayor for, for a long time from my perspective, and I don't live in Mount Airy or anything, but he did a fantastic job. And it's just its just a tremendous loss, it really is. But I don't think there's anything else to say. Commissioner Weaver. Uh, I share your thoughts. Mayor Rockenberg, he's a good guy. Uh, sometimes a, a good guy young. So, uh, <clears throat> sorry to hear that. Um, I do want to make a couple comments here, though, about Oh, the priority carols now. No, we'll get into that. Let's just, oh, okay, let's, okay. Let's I just focus wanted on to uh, we'll say, you know, working with, uh, like I said, Mayor Pat was uh, great. I talked to him many times in Mount Airy. We do quite a bit of business over there, and I'd run into him. We always had discussions, and as you said, always just a nice person, easy to deal with, and we talk about county issues and um, and call each other if there was an issue on things and we, we need to talk about. So um, this was a sad loss. Okay, and Commissioner Wentz. So Mount Airy. Mount Airy is uh, an interesting place. <laughs> uh, let's be clear, it is. 
there are four counties in Mount Airy. And uh, it's always been very interesting to see the perspective of how the folks are there and how they operate down there. And, you know, I've said oftentimes that uh, Carroll County is, is amazing when it comes to uh, how different we are from one end to the other based upon the fact that we're a pretty small county. Um, Mayor Pat had that knack of, of knowing just how to balance that. Uh, in, the, in emergency services, I talked with him often about the fact that, you know, Frederick County was in Mount Airy more than Mount Airy was in Mount Airy, uh, or Howard County was in there, or Montgomery County was in there. Uh, during COVID, uh, when I had uh, the honor, I guess it's still an honor, not sure after getting yelled at for the last two years, but uh, when I led this board through uh, the, the, that, that, it, that challenge that we're still in, by the way, uh, most of you remember that one of our first major issues here in the county uh, was the nursing home in Mount mm -hmm. Airy. Mayor Pat was on the phone with me right away. He had, he had his opinions. Uh, we also, during that time, conducted uh, conference calls with all of the mayors to ensure that everybody was on the same page here. He truly appreciated that. Uh, he was just an incredibly personable guy. Whether he agreed or disagreed with you, in the end, unlike a lot of people today, he agreed to disagree. And there are a lot of folks today that don't agree to disagree. All they want to do is disagree. Mayor Pat was not like that. And that's what made him a good leader. It's not your way or the highway, and there's a lot of highways in Mount Airy, by the way. Um, it was what can we all do together to get the end result that we need to get to. And that's what Mayor Pat could accomplish. So uh, to, to, his, to his family, uh, to everyone, to the town of Mount Airy, uh, because he just recently won another election, um, I say we, you know, our, our deepest sympathies. Uh, but remember the good things with Mayor Pat, and that's what I tried to do here in my comments, because uh, again, you know, everybody's so angry today. Uh, and he, he, he would get a little angry about things and then he'd go, you know what, grand scheme of things, I think we can find a way to fix this. And man, was that a, that, that's a good way to be. Life is short. Mayor Pat was only in his 50s. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen. Live every day with integrity and common sense that you should. And that's what Mayor Rockenberg did. So everyone over there, um, his family, and again, uh, the whole town, everyone that he touched, his fingerprints will forever be on this county and specifically the southern part of Carroll County. Thank you. Okay, very well said. Um, this may be a little clunky, and I apologize, but I do need to reach out to uh, Chris Swam. Uh, do we have Neil Roop on the line? I believe we do have a caller. Hold on, let me call them out. The unmute. Caller one, can you identify yourself, please? Caller one. Hello, caller, please unmute. Might be having some caller one, you are unmuted. Can you please identify yourself? Okay, uh, technology may be having the best of uh, the individual. Let's um, move on to our priority, Carol. I appreciate all my colleagues' comments and sentiment um, that was shared regarding Mayor Pat Brockenberg. Um, but with priority, Carol, uh, Commissioner Boucher, why don't you lead us off? Right. Thank you very much. Uh, it was very touching for you guys to share your, your appreciation for Mary Pat, Mayor Pat, so thank you very much. I'll start off by welcoming on two new members of the county, Tamara and Huffman with the Road Maintenance Department and Darian Rill, Building Inspector of Permits. Welcome aboard. 
welcome to the county family and we appreciate your dedication to serve the county along with us i want to give a special thanks to our public safety department we have two members here director scott campbell and deputy director valerie hawkins they have been quite busy they've kept us abreast on all the road closures because of the rain i think there's probably around three dozen road closures and our ems people help uh, people from being swept up in the water i know there's a lot of creeks and rivers in my district that overflow so i appreciate the service of you guys keeping us posted and protecting our community uh mr swan do i have any uh photos or videos of stuff i did a tour with commissioner frazier of the library exploration commons took some photos of that this week it is an absolutely wonderful addition to the county the project that, here we go when we originally went down there, I think all of us have went down to a basement. They used to have storage of seasonal decorations. Now it's absolutely phenomenal. This investment is going to help seed entrepreneurship and business ventures. They have uh, meeting rooms, conference areas, uh, big screen TVs for meetings. And they also have my favorite, a, a wonderful kitchen. And I had suggested to them that maybe in the future we could do little programs like cooking with the commissioners where we take turns possibly with uh Oh yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah. Well That's Commissioner scary. Commissioner <laughs> Frazier said he'd be willing to sample eat the food. Here's the kitchen. This kitchen is phenomenal. I love to eat and I love to cook. So I said that it's possible that maybe we could take turns, maybe get an uh, a restaurant tour or a chef or someone from each one of our districts and we can prepare some food and give a little bit of publicity to restaurants in their districts. So I'm very much impressed with that, and this is in Commissioner Frazier's district. He has a lot to be proud of. I want to give a special thanks to Director Andrea Bursler, the Operations Manager, Bob Kuntz, and the, uh, the Library Director there. I believe it's Jen. Her last name escapes me. Please forgive me. But they gave an absolutely wonderful tour, and I appreciate what they've done. I also want to mention that the latest Barn Quilt Trail brochures out thanks to our tourism director bonnie staub this is wonderful for a county people come into our county to tour these barn quilts and while they're riding around our county they visit the stores they visit the restaurants this is a tremendous addition to the economic development of our county and i want to thank tourism for putting this together people come in and here we go they come in and they spend their money in our county and that's what we love so thank you very much, Bonnie, for all you're doing to help the county out. And if anyone lives locally, pick up or go online and go tour these places. The farmers are very proud of what they're doing and promoting the county. So thank you very much. Okay, thanks. That's pretty cool uh, display. Thanks, Chris, for sharing that. Commissioner Weaver. Uh, just to piggyback on the barn quilts, you know, yeah. they started in Ohio uh, in the 1990s and they went up through Canada as uh, popular areas that people displayed what their bar old barn was about. They actually designed their logo. And these aren't the hex symbols that we uh, mm -hmm. uh, mix up sometimes with the uh, Amish Mennonite uh, group, but these are have something about the symbol that uh, deals with uh, uh, that barn or that family and what they're doing. So I think this is what, 40 some of them in the county. And if you go around the whole tour, um, they're everywhere in the county now mm -hmm. are popping up and if you have an interest in getting one uh, Bonnie Staub uh, in tourism uh, has a list and as they get funds available they kind of uh, have them designed and put up and uh, 39. Uh, 39 okay I know we were right at that level on that well first of all uh, I want to piggyback Commissioner Wance everybody's so angry today and you're right I had a attended an emergency meeting of the Board of Education the other day, Monday, and we're talking about masks, but I saw so much anger both ways and so many uh, comments, uh, what's going on. I mean, in this country, I think we have to start coming together and look out what's, what's good for everybody, not just individuals out here and get over the anger and uh, what's going on uh, with e your individual ideology or whatever we have to start looking at what is best for all people and uh, uh, I'm just totally amazed at the uh, start of that meeting some gentleman in the back shouted and they had to be removed in front of his wife and little kids and that is wrong as far as I'm concerned and 
we, we just have to get over this anger and start coming together to get through this issue that we have. And uh, Steve, you're right on that. Uh, we are a very angry country all of a sudden and somewhat deserved. I mean, we have a lot of things on us pulling out of uh, Afghanistan, the, you know, the way that some of the, uh, the uh, controversy over how it's handled. Uh, Ida yesterday coming up, and by the way, Carroll County dodged a big bullet. Uh, we were very lucky, some flooding, we didn't have major issues. But here again, the anxiety people have over all this, uh, all over all these issues, uh, builds up and we get to have an angry society from it. And I hope we can take Labor Day here, uh, look through this and come back with a little different attitude here after Labor Day. And by the way, if you want to a way to change your attitude, attend the Maryland State Fair. Uh, it goes on through Monday, and uh, it's running this week, so uh, any, uh, take your family, enjoy uh, some time at the Maryland State Fair, and come back after this, hopefully with a different outlook on life. Get some of that delicious, healthy food they serve. <laughs> yeah. well, delicious, I don't know about Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Wentz. Oh, hi. How you doing? It's on you. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, well said, Dick. I'm right there with you. Uh, we did dodge a bullet yesterday. It could have been a lot worse. Uh, when I saw the when I saw the tornado that went down Solomon's Island Highway and took a left on West Street in Annapolis, I'm like, good grief. Those things seem to be, they have their own directions. Maybe we'll have to look at that a little further, Val, at some point. I don't know. They anyway. have GPS. Yeah, they got... GPS on those things. Anyway, uh, everyone seemed to use common sense yesterday. Most folks get the uh, message that if it looks like standing water, don't drive in it. Mm -hmm. uh, very minimal call count yesterday for, for our, our fire companies. So most of them, I believe, were routine. Just a couple, but most was the routine stuff. So thank you to all the citizens as well that paid attention yesterday. Uh, certainly do appreciate that. Um, on that note, just a reminder, we'll be here next week as well, but uh, September 11th is, is fast approaching. There are many ceremonies that are being held next Saturday. Uh, one of the big ones, uh, they're all big, let's be clear, it is the 20, I don't like to use the word anniversary when we talk about this, but it's the 20th year since that occurred. Let's put it that way. Um, anniversary always sounds like a celebration to me. I, I never really like that, but anyway. Uh, CC Visa, uh, our Volunteer Emergency Service Association, always has a really nice ceremony. Uh, it would be wonderful to see some of the public there, uh, other than folks in uniform. So that starts at 8.30 at our uh, fabulous Public Safety Training Center. Uh, several of us will be there. Several of us will be uh, saying a few words. Emphasis on a few words. Um, I'm looking at you. Words. I only say a few words. Look, look, <laughs> I'm about to head on being black. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so anyway, uh, there's another one at the BFW, right, Dick, that you're speaking at at mm -hmm. noon, I believe. Uh, Tawny oh, Town's sorry. having one at 8:30 at the Memorial Park. So take a look around. Maybe take a moment since it's been 20 years with the anger thing in place to remember what occurred there and why we are able to do what we can do here um, and and maybe go to one of those ceremonies and pay tribute to the folks that sacrificed that day for all of us uh, that would be a great way to maybe get out of this funk that everybody seems to be in to want to scream at everybody all the time I'll get off my uh, high horse on that um, great planning and zoning meeting last night that I attended really good debate we'll hear more of that that's coming um, uh, shortly because it'll be at our level now at this, the next uh, juncture. And I want to thank the folks there. They're doing an amazing job. Remember that groups like that really set the tone for the future of this county. It's not just on us. It's on the folks that we put on those committees. So uh, they're, they're doing a, a great job. So I um, want to thank them for that. And um, I think at this point, that's it. If I forgot something, I'll... You know, 
Yeah, trust me, we do. <laughs> okay, Commissioner <laughs> Frazier. <laughs> Well, I don't have much left to say here, but I was at the Exploration Commons. It looks great. I will say it's going to be a tremendous draw for Westminster and Carroll County because of what they have in there. And it was said when we were there, there's less than uh, six libraries throughout the country that's going to have everything that that, that library will have down there. It's just, it's really nice. And they might even have it, would have had it done by now if they had the steel. They're still waiting for some structural steel to put mm. some put some things in. And let's face it, <laughs> once you need structural steel, you need structural steel. So you have to wait for that to come in before they can open up everything would be safe. But I can't wait for that to happen. And one additional thing about the, we, we kind of did dodge a bullet, but we did have a lot of high uh, winds and a lot of rain yesterday. So maybe if you have a neighbor you haven't seen out, check your neighbor, make sure you see if they need any help. I'm not just saying this because my house is partially damaged, but if you want to come over to my house, no, I'm just kidding. Help with the cleanup. There might be somebody might need a little bit of help cleaning up and stuff like that. But just look out for your neighbors, and that's all I have. Okay, I appreciate it. And um, sticking with the, uh, the same sentiment, I mean, we may disagree on lots of things up here and elsewhere, but we care about each other and our community and our neighbors, and that's why we're doing what we're doing. Same thing with the Planning and Zoning Commission. They're doing it because they care. Um, so if this is the plug, if you want to participate in one of the commissions, councils, you know, uh, organizations that support our community, let us know, uh, which dovetails into the challenges we have still with social media. There's a lot of things still being said on social media that it's so much easier if you pick up the phone or text or email uh, as opposed to blatantly you know call things out and uh, you know I will not go back and forth on social media but I will always uh, share my email and my contact information um, saying reach out and let's have that conversation I may not agree or you may not agree but it's important to build that dialogue and keep that dialogue going for the good of our community um, COVID-19 is still with us. We're talking a lot, we haven't talked a lot about it. Uh, we're still pushing the vaccinations across the county and across the state. Um, it's not about herd, me, uh, herd, whatever it's called. It's about getting vaccinated. Uh, and um, it's about doing the best we can. Um, mentioned Afghanistan, it's hard. And for all of our veterans that are out there, to include me, I continue to remind myself that the work I did in Afghanistan was not done in vain and it was done for the right reasons. But when you give a year plus or a couple years in a place where you're told to be, it's kind of challenging. So, uh, you know, you see a veteran, just remind yourself and remind them just to say thank you. A lot of them wearing those hats, you know, uh, showing that they've served. Um, I appreciate the comments about 9-11. We were embedded in the at one time, and we, are, we need to be steadfast and stand strong. And uh, I look forward to uh, participating in uh, the remembrance and the meaning of 9-11. Um, and for me personally and those that are out there, uh, wishing everybody Lashna Tova, Tikatevu, uh, or uh, Happy Rosh Hashanah, or have a good new year, which will be um, on Tuesday. And again, it's a way for me to refresh and remind myself that we screw up during the year. And I mean, that's just the facts. This is the time to say, hey man, I screwed up and these are things I wanna do better. And then think about it and reflect and then say, I'm gonna commit myself to trying to do better. You know, in a nutshell, that's what, you know, Rosh Hashanah is about. So uh, with that, what I would like to do is reach back out to Chris Swam, see if uh, somebody is on um, that I think they should be. Chris, uh, can you see if uh, Neil Roop is on by chance? Caller two, can you please identify yourself? Neil Roop. Okay, Neil, I appreciate it. It's Commissioner uh, Ed Rothstein. Um, we had the opportunity a few minutes ago, don't know if you watched or not, to uh, share our thoughts about Mayor Pat and uh, like to turn it over to you if you'd like to share a few thoughts of your own. I, I greatly appreciate that. Uh, Pat, um, I was able to work with him for many years. 
Uh, we got a lot closer through COVID-19. If there's any positive things, that was one of the things all the mayors got together on a regular basis. Mayor Pat, to begin with, loved the town of Mount Airy and the people. And during COVID-19, he was concerned about everything, whether it was the people's health. But one of the things that really stood out was uh, the caring that he had in the thought process that he was extremely creative in thinking of the pop-up seating for restaurants. He was really concerned about his businesses and the restaurants that were being affected the most. And he was trying to think of anything and everything. And he would bring that to the table. And actually in New Windsor, we had a couple of tables put up in different locations because of uh, his ideas. Uh, he was just a great person, you know, a great mayor, but a, a great human being. And uh, he touched the lives of so many people. He touched mine, and uh, I'm forever thankful for the time that I uh, shared my life with him and he shared with uh, his life with me. So I uh, thank you for this opportunity, and thank you for uh, recognizing Mayor Pat. Okay, Neil, thank you so much for those very kind words. Let's uh, move on to... Finishing up priority, Carolyn, I think we have a proclamation. Commissioner Wentz? Yes, we do. Mr. Campbell and Ms. Hawkins, you might want to come forward here. Uh, September is, is always uh, Emergency Preparedness Month. We always declare that. And um, we have what I consider to be uh, one of, if not the best, emergency management groups in the state. And I know that for a fact because uh, I sit in on a lot of the meetings and when I walk in the door, Val goes, wait a minute, what are you doing here? What, wait, what? What are you doing here? Uh, and I watch what occurs in other counties. I see what goes on in, in Carroll. Uh, you all do an amazing job with very limited staff. Some of these emergency management uh, staffs in the counties have 75 people working for them. You do an awesome job with the limited amount of staff that you have. So to you and everybody down there, thank you very much. And Scott goes without saying, uh, you know, over the years I've spent uh, many waking hours with you. Uh, you and I have been to uh, several funerals together, and it, it's my honor always to have you by my side as my director of public safety when we attend those events. Uh, so to you and all the folks in your shop as well, uh, we certainly do appreciate that. And our citizens are much better off as a result of all the work that you do. So September 2021, once again, we are declaring as the County Preparedness Month. Uh, I'll quickly read through this. Emergency preparedness, shared responsibility the entire nation. Every jurisdiction, every community, every business, every family, and every individual in having a role in planning and preparing for emergencies and disasters of all kinds. Carroll County Preparedness Month, in coordination with National Preparedness Month, provides an opportunity to highlight the important role of individuals as they prepare for emergencies in their homes, businesses, schools, and communities. This nationwide observance encourages all Americans to learn more about ways to prepare for all types of emergencies. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security and Carroll County Department of Public Safety urge all county residents and business owners to take time during September 21, 2020, 20, what is it? 2021. Mm -hmm. Why am I having trouble saying that? Why are you looking at me? I don't know. <laughs> because I just looked at you for some reason. To create an emergency supply kit. I actually have one of those, by the way. <laughs> you have one? I do. No doubt. Okay, right. To make, <laughs> to make a family or business emergency plan, to remain informed about different threats and the appropriate response to each, and to get involved in preparing their community for emergencies. Uh, so we are declaring... Uh, recognizing the importance of preparing for emergencies and we're proud to observe September 2021 with appropriate preparedness activities. So we are proclaiming uh, Preparedness Month in Carroll uh, for September 2021 and I'm going to shut up. Hey Scott, how you doing? I'm doing fine. <laughs> and thank you very much for those kind words and, and I have to say first I think everything you said and and then some for Valerie and her staff they do an, an absolute amazing job and, and I'm very fortunate to have them on staff and secondly I, I want to say that I, I consider it a, a, an equal honor despite the sometimes the sad reasons that we gather at other other locations but it's an honor to, to be with you and show our respects in that manner that said um, 
I don't know if Valerie has anything she wants to share other than uh, from our department. Thank you very much because a lot of what uh, she's able to do, we're able to do is because of, of you folks giving us the resources and, and the ability to do that. So uh, thank you very much for letting us do what we do. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for all the kind words. Thank you for the support. Uh, we certainly enjoy a, a high level of support from uh, you as a, all as a board. Um, and thank you for declaring uh, the month to be Carroll County Preparedness Month along with National Preparedness Month. Our theme this year in Carroll County is going to be don't be scared, be prepared. Um, yeah. Anybody who's familiar with our, uh, with our uh, office, we have a, a be prepared mascot. Uh, he's a bee. So B E E prepared, B E prepared. Uh, you need someone all. to dress up as a bee. Oh, a bee. We, we we have talked about that over the years, but we haven't found anybody to to take that on quite yet. Um, so definitely appreciate the support. Yeah. Uh, National Preparedness Month was launched in 2004, September 2004, uh, shortly after the events of September 11th, um, and it's really designed to uh, be that recognition uh, and uh, get some inf preparedness information for uh, individuals and families and businesses. Uh, the businesses piece is important as well. Um, uh, everybody should have that plan, have a communications plan with your family, have that emergency supplies kit for your home, for your car, possibly for your workplace. Um, there's all sorts of information out there on the internet. All you have to do is do a quick Google search or go to ready.gov about what should go into a kit. Um, templates for plans for your family, all sorts of things out there, that you, tools that you can use to help make sure that you and your family are better prepared. Um, and then practice your plan. You know, creating your plan is important. Uh, that's a really good point. Uh, but you have to make sure that you practice that. You have to make sure that all of your family members truly know how it's supposed to work and have a chance to practice. Just like we talk about practicing fire drills, you practice your emergency plan as well. Um, so. You know, to tie into what's happened uh, certainly over the past few weeks uh, with uh, various disasters, especially Tropical Storm and Hurricane Ida, um, the difference between you know, being a little bit more comfortable uh, and making it through one of these disasters, uh, even a short power outage. Uh, we do have some folks that are still out of power this morning after the tropical storm went through last night. Um, the difference between being a little bit more comfortable and getting through that a little bit uh, easier with your family is having that preparedness kit, having that preparedness plan in place. A little bit of preparedness goes an awfully long way. So definitely appreciate uh, the opportunity to bring a little bit more attention to that. Okay. No, I, I appreciate it. It's uh, deeds, not words. And uh, yeah. I, I tell you, between Commissioner Wance and, and everybody talking, don't take yourself so serious. Take everything we do very seriously, and that's what you do, and I appreciate that. So Thank you. I think uh, a photo opportunity may be in the uh, mix. Can I call my hair? No. Yeah. Matt? <laughs> yeah, we'll give you, you a minute. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about Adobe Software Subscription Renewal. Mr. Ripper, come on up. And who you bring with you, Eli? Hey, one thing I forgot, I told you, I please, we got over 18 uh, job openings in Carroll. If you're looking for a job, go on our website. Man, we got yeah. some good jobs. Yeah. Good pay, good benefits, and you work for us. What could be better? <laughs> I mean, B Bear Branch, $23 an hour. Yeah. You know, for We're the naturalist. naturalist. They get yeah. the work with you. And, right. So, yeah, seriously, uh, to get the word out there. There's, you know, uh, we got some real, mm -hmm. from from management stuff to, mm -hmm. to it. All points in go. between, I mean, we got all kinds of openings. So go on the website, and there it is, right there. The Swami brings it up just like that. Okay, sorry, Mark. That's okay. <laughs> he might need some hirees, too. Yeah. Okay, good, good morning. 
Uh, the Office of Procurement in cooperation with Technology Services requests your approval to award the purchase of Adobe Software Subscription Renewal to Dell Marketing LP in the amount of $27,330.95. This purchase is being made through the Maryland State COTS contract, BPO number 060B2490021. The purchase amount is within the adopted budget and no additional funds will be necessary. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, this is the first time we've ever been before the board with this particular software purchase. It's because it finally went over the um, $25,000 mark. It was not due to a price increase in the software, however. Um, it was a result of COVID and the fact that we needed to be able to do more remotely than we were doing before. And what people are able to do with this particular software package is they are able to provide electronic signatures um, to a lot of the financial documents, purchase orders, purchase requests. Um, we are able to, the, the telework policy is going through the system and, and can be done um, all through email with a signature on it. A lot of individual agencies have created their own forms or contracts. Um, where people are able to sign electronically. So it's the number of licenses that we've had to increase. Um, you might look at that as one of the positive ben benefits of COVID, is it kind of forced us into getting into this mode and we will keep going that direction. Um, it does interact with our financial management system um, for documents going into that as well. Good stuff. Okay. Well, Mr. Ripper, I like the fact <coughs> that you recognize the shortcomings through the stress and now you're addressing them. So with that, I move that the Board of Commissioners approve the purchase for Adobe Software Subscription Renewal to Dell Marketing LP in the amount of $27,330.95. Second. Okay, I got a motion and mm -hmm. second. Any discussion questions for Mark? Seeing here none at this time, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, 5-0. See you later, Mr. Ripper. Eli, I think Thank you very much for being with us. And we're requesting approval to award term contract for electric door maintenance to Susquehanna Door Services. Justin. Morning, Commissioners. Morning. The Office of Procurement in cooperation with the Bureau of Facilities requests your approval to award term contract for electric door maintenance to Susquehanna Door Service in the amount of $3,432.92 per month. Uh, this comes out to $41,195.04 annually. Uh, the county advertised for bids and received four responses uh, as listed below. The bid amount is within the adopted budget and no additional funds will be necessary. Morning, Commissioners. This is a term contract will provide monthly maintenance and service to all electric doors throughout Carroll County. This contract will consist of 23 buildings with a total of 107 doors being serviced. Susquehanna currently holds electric door contract for the county and has since 2015. This new contract will potentially be for a one year with the option of five additional one year renewals. Um, we will, you know, look at their first year service, rate them, make sure everything's going smooth, make sure they're working with us. Um, if we have issues, then we will we'll address them at that time. I don't foresee any issues, commissioners. Like I say, they have the contract now uh, for the last five years doing top quality work. So I have no complaints with them. I'd like to move forward uh, with your approval. Okay, any questions? Are all these bids a month for a monthly total? That is, is correct. That last one's a little high. It yeah. definitely <laughs> is. Yeah. Definitely is. A little? I'm thinking, I thought that's for the year when I saw that one. Okay. I don't think they wanted the work. Jeez. I'll make the motion the Board of Commissioners award a term contract for electric door maintenance to Susquehanna Door Service in the amount of $3,000. $432.92 per month or $41,195.04 annually. Second. Okay, I have a motion and I have a second. Any question, discussion? Just on this one. Seeing here none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Eli, you stay. Doug and Reed, you're coming up or just Reed? Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I like morning. that announcement and a photo and all that kind of stuff. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. Yep. Training, wheel, training wheels are off. You're up. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, hang on. <laughs> Here you go. 
The Office of Procurement in cooperation with the Bureau of Fleet Management and Warehouse Operations requests your approval to purchase one E50 R2 series Bobcat compact excavator from Clark Equipment Company in the amount of $65,925.24. This purchase is being made through a source well contract number 040319-CEC that was competitively bid. This amount is in the adopted budget, FY, FY22 budget, and no additional funds will be needed. So, Commissioners, this mini excavator will be in addition to the Department of Facilities fleet. At the moment, they do not have any equipment that can do any type of excavation. Uh, with the growing amount of projects that facility is doing, uh, we find it would be beneficial for them to have this equipment. Uh, for past projects, they've been forced to rent one, but we've had some scheduling conflicts with that. Uh, so at this point, uh, we believe that it would be beneficial for them to have their own. Uh, and Justin is here. He can go in more in depth on specific projects where they would need this piece of equipment. Well, I think this is wonderful. I've gone out to road crews, as Mr. Brown back there knows, and this is one of the things they were talking about they needed. So the fact that this is on their agenda is wonderful. I think it's great to see the communication between staff and the board to make these things happen. Therefore, I move that the Board of Commissioners approve the purchase of one E50 R2 Series Bobcat Compact Excavator to Clark Equipment Company in the amount of $65,925.24. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. I do have a question. You said it was competitively bid. Who is it competitively bid against? Uh, I don't have the exact list of other companies that was bid against through, but it was, uh, we had did, uh, piggyback off of a source well contract that was competitively bid. I can get you the list of uh, the vendors who bid, but I don't have that in front of me. Okay. Have these prices just recently gone up on these? Yes, sir, absolutely. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of steel on that thing. Yeah, I know. And the last, it's probably got a chip in it, six too. months. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Definitely. Several chips increase. or something. Well, we've seen hey. that with all, all the vehicles, too, not yeah. just equipment, but yeah. What, everything. What, what exactly do they do with this thing? I'm just curious. Great. So over day-to-day -day ops, uh, it extends from running new drain tile, uh, construction work, digging up uh, concrete, pouring concrete. We'll use this machine to assist in that. Um, we're looking at other attachments on this machine that will allow us to possibly do some rough mowing along trails and parks, down along steep banks where we can reach out and do some mowing, cool. stay out of danger. Um, it, it's endless. Uh, we can use this daily. Um, out there facilities and the good thing is we work well with roads if their machines down absolutely come borrow facilities we'll work together we'll make it happen um, it, that's where we are with that is so there a special licensing on this piece of equipment that's negative no. No, we just train our in-house staff to run the run the machines right. and uh, once we feel comfortable and they're comfortable um, we release them and, and do the task force. Okay. I'd like to just add also, I believe this is the, the same model that the roads department has, so a lot of the guys already have experience using okay. it. Okay, that's good. Yeah, good. we kept them the same so we didn't have one manufacturer yeah. of the right. boat compared to a Bobcat or a yeah. cat compared to a Bobcat with different controls, trying to standardize across the board so we all have experience with it. Does this have a thumb? Yes. Okay. Nope. So yeah. you, you and Reed going to pick this thing up uh, this afternoon or what? Mm -hmm. It's all him. I'll <laughs> <laughs> be doing, doing donuts in the parking lot. <laughs> I'd like to state that I think this will actually increase our, our service time instead of waiting to rent something or being in the queue to rent it. This is all increase our responsive time, and I think that's a great benefit yeah. to the and Another good thing we have when we get this machine is we will work with the contractors. Instead mm -hmm. of paying them to tear up the concrete, we can do that in house and save those funds. Yeah. Um, and then they come on the backside and just pour the concrete. Yeah. So we can do a lot of that labor end in-house to save money on the tail end. Excellent. And it's always fun to destroy as opposed to build. I wasn't going to say that, but just, I'm glad just you did. A military <laughs> man says that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, did you see the governor the other day? He, he was sitting in that thing and he tearing was. down that building in Baltimore. Yeah, I, I had the opportunity to do that on Fort Meade, take down a few buildings. It's always fun to get in there and So for destroy. the record, so. at some point I'd like the opportunity to tear something up. <laughs> it, it is fun. Um, I don't okay. care, just something. <laughs> Got it covered. <laughs> I don't know, this could be. No. <laughs> we have a motion, we do have a second. Any other comments of relevance or questions? Seeing here, none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now let's talk about a 2022 Ford Transit 350 <coughs> cutaway. And the two of you are still up. 
go for it, Eli. Uh, the Office of Procurement, in cooperation with the Bureau of Fleet Management and Warehouse Operations, requests your approval to purchase one 2022 Ford Transit 350 cutaway rear-wheel drive from Apple Ford in the amount of $49,569.67. This purchase is being made through a Baltimore County contract number 0004504 that was competitively bid. This amount is in the adopted FY22 budget and no additional funds will be needed. So commissioners, this transit van will be replacing a 2005 Chevy 2500 Express van. Uh, due to its age and the cost of repairs, we feel it is fit to rotate this out of our fleet with a new vehicle. Um, yeah, and this vehicle will be sent to auction. The Chevy will be sent to auction? Yes, sir. Okay. What does a cutaway mean? Is that just a brand, I mean, a well, model? So the, um, uh, the body of the van isn't attached to the cab, so it allows us to have a bigger body so they can store more tools and uh, supplies. I'll move the Board of Commissioners approve the purchase of one 2022 Ford Transit 350 cutaway uh, ARWD to Apple Ford in the amount of $49,569.67. Second. Couldn't negotiate the 67 cents off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a motion. I have a second. Any uh, discussion questions? We let them off the hook pretty easy today. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Mr. Oliver, when the equipment comes in, let me know. I'd like to come out and get a photo of the equipment and some staff and put it up on priority care for you. Absolutely. Thank you. So you're going to take a tour of a bobcat, in other words. I'm going to get a photo of the bobcat. Oh, Maybe I'm going to take a tour. It. Okay. No, okay, let's... Uh, <laughs> not if they're in the right mind. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, until rudely interrupted, I'll continue. <laughs> Let's request approval to purchase easements at 1025 Meadow Branch Road. It wasn't rude. Oh, it's a little rude. Yeah. No? no. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Burdine. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for your time this morning. Uh, I'm here this morning to request your approval to purchase easements on the property located at 1025 Meadow Branch Road. Uh, the Department of Public Works has negotiated to purchase the easements needed for the future one runway protection zone on approximately one third of an acre from DLH Limited Liability Partnership for 25,000. The easements are being purchased for the Meadow Branch Relocation Project, which is a cornerstone project for the larger Carroll County Airport Runway Safety Improvement Project. As a reminder, 90% of this purchase will be reimbursed by the FAA and 5% will be reimbursed by the MAA. No brainer, needs to be done. I make the motion we approve the purchase or you can. It's in your district. Why don't you do it? Just start to make the motions. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm on. out. I, I rescind. You'll second it. My, uh, I'll make the motion <laughs> that the Board of County Commissioners approve the purchase easement at 1025 Meadow Branch Road from DLH Limited Liability Partnership. I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any further questions or discussion? Hey, that was rudely interrupted. <laughs> too slow. Seeing here none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank Good you, Commissioner. Okay, let's talk about a 2022 Chevrolet Tahoe SUV. Who's coming up? Ms. Val? Eli? Getting your exercise back and yeah. forth. Okay. The Office of Procurement in cooperation with the Department of Public Safety requests your approval to purchase one 2022 Chevrolet Tahoe Police SUV with four-wheel drive and special service package from Criswell Chevrolet Fleet Services in the amount of $42,137. This purchase is being made through Maryland State Contract number 001B1600354 that was competitively bid. The purchase amount is within the adopted budget and no additional funds will be necessary. Um, just a, a little bit more background, you can see in the briefing paper, we currently use a 2011 Chevrolet Tahoe that was purchased in August of 2011 uh, with uh, grant funds through the 2008 uh, Urban Area Security Initiative Program. Um, that vehicle has been in service since that time. Uh, we use it for both frontline emergency response as well as uh, more routine day-to-day uh, -day responsibilities. We use it to tow uh, shelter trailers. We use it to tow lots of, you know, any, anything and everything that comes along that goes along with emergency management response. That is our 
the vehicle that we use to do that. Um, purchasing this new vehicle will allow us to uh, continue to reliably provide emergency response. Uh, as Commissioner Wentz is familiar, and I'm sure Commissioner Ross Senior as well, uh, uh, emergency frontline response vehicles uh, don't last forever, and you don't want to keep them in service as that particular uh, uh, use uh, for forever. Uh, we want to make sure that that stays reliable and safe. Um, so this will allow us to provide that response to incidents throughout the county moving into the future, and it'll also allow us to repurpose the vehicle that we currently have, that 2011. Uh, so that that will be non relegated basically to non-emergency status within the Department of Public Safety. There are uh, other uses that uh, we do uh, have identified needs for, and uh, that will allow us to do that. And DHS grant funding is available to cover the entire purchase of the vehicle. Uh, we'll be using, uh, we've, as long as you all concur, we will be using 20, 2019 uh, Urban Area Security Initiative grant funding for this proposed purchase. Perfect. If, if I may, Ms. Hawkins, thanks for mentioning the fact that we're hmm. replacing a 2011 vehicle, because I think that emphasizes that we're getting our money's worth out of the product. And also, as a business owner, I know that eventually vehicles start to require too much maintenance, and then they become hmm. money pits. So this is a very wise decision. I appreciate you expressing that that vehicle has been in service for 10 years. And in public safety, the last thing you want is a vehicle to break down on you. So this is a very wise move. Thank you. Thank you. What Thank color you. is it? <laughs> it will be white. <laughs> you want it red? Uh, yellow. Y maybe yellow. We, we could probably get it a different color, but it would cost more money. No. Well, it's you assy money. Still. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Tahoes we bought for the Sheriff's Department late were much less than this. This is just the price increase that has happened in the last six the, months. The, this is a 2022 version. Uh, yeah. We were not able to get a 2021 yeah. uh, model year. The 2022 uh, had a 4% uh, increase in the cost uh, just from model year to model year. Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing this across the board here. This is mm -hmm. going to affect our budget eventually. I mean, the, the cost increases uh, on just standard. Not everybody's going to uh, see this, I think, in the near future. Mr. Zaleski no longer has fingernails. He won't. He's probably chewing them off. Yeah. All right, I'm going to make the motion we purchase one 2022 Chevrolet Tahoe Police SUV from Chris Well in the amount of $42,137. Second. Okay, I got a motion. <clears throat> and the white's okay. And it's got a red stripe. It will most likely have a red stripe. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Are you sure? Red and okay. gold. <clears throat> Tactical pause. Okay, guys, uh, motion and got a second. Anything of value to add? <laughs> Seeing nothing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. You're very, very welcome. Keep up. Now let's job. talk about mouth 20, FY21 applicant Red Properties LLC, 5140 Grand Valley Road in Westminster. Who wants to start this off? Chris, you want to? Yeah, I'll kick it off. it off. Good okay. morning. So as a reminder, um, our agricultural preservation budget, and there, we actually have two budgets. We have one for the MALF program, which is the state program, and that budget, the county budget, is to um, cover the county's portion of the MALF program. We also have a county program then as well. So we are wrapping up the FY21 MALF program. And we have one last project that MALF is um, able to partially fund. And, uh, but there's not quite enough funds in both the state and county budget to cover the entire cost. So what we're looking for, and we're here before you today, is to transfer funds from one budget to another. This would not be an increase in the <coughs> agricultural uh, preservation budget. But I'll turn it over to JP to talk about the specifics. Okay. Good morning, commissioners. Um, this is a property that you've approved in the past um, to be sent down to mouth uh, for preservation down there. This is uh, Red Properties LLC. It's located at 5140 Grand Valley Road in Westminster. It's 38 acres and we'll be retiring seven lot rights in District 1. <clears throat> this farm has been down in mouth for the last two years. It's been two cycles in a row that they did not receive an offer. Um, this past year, a farm dropped out. They sold their farm before they got an offer. 
and the offer moved down the list and it eventually got to this farm. Um, this farm <clears throat> made an offer to sell their easement at $265,342 and the insufficient funds offer was at $199,734.21. <clears throat> so we'll be asking um, for county funds no more than $65,607.79. Here's the farm outlined in red. And you can see we have some other farms around it. And we have a, also another mouth applicant there up to the right in the same area. This is how the farm lays in with other preservation. And again, we're requesting approval of additional county funds transfer to mouth for Red Properties LLC for the applicant of the 21 hmm. FY21 FY cycle. Say one more time where the additional funds are coming from. Sure. So we have two different budgets, right? So one budget is for MELF. Um, so the MELF program. What's wrong? Do you want to explain? Oh. It really, it, it's. <laughs> well, I, Sorry. I was walking down the hall. Sure. <laughs> so, so, what got so, said. But. So normally, there, this really isn't a budget transfer, as budget has explained it to me. So okay, normally there apologies. would be a yes. budget transfer resolution in here. You, you have, there's one budget for the money. You, you think of it as two. Deb right. Ham explained it to me, and you could explain it better. Yeah, yes, way. this is not a budget so, transfer in the sense that you know it. You are not approving the moving of money from one account to, a, to another. This is, this is simply rearranging how we're making use of state funding and, and county funding. Okay. But right. this is it's funding that's already earmarked for? Ag press. Yes. Yes. Right. yes, sir. It's yes. all in yes, the Ag press budget. It's just in, in um, okay. There's, we anticipate, I guess is the way to say it, that $1.3 million mm -hmm. of yeah. the Ag Prez budget will go toward um, mm -hmm. mouth, um, our contribution toward the mouth easement purchases. Um, and, and they've spent the $1.3 billion, um, and so they need, in their minds, <laughs> $65 million from the rest of their budget. $65,000. We are winning $65 million. <laughs> right? I know we're sitting on money here. <laughs> oh, these days, no. millions, trillions. Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah so, so basically we had 12 applicants. Two of them didn't get offers. Of the 10, one of them dropped out that got an offer. That money moved down to the 11th applicant that applicant declined it because that applicant was twice as big yeah, okay. this applicant made a discounted offer to the state actually the, the state will pay 70 percent of their appraised value they mm -hmm. will offer that unless the applicant's um, bid price is lower this applicant's bid price was lower but it was still deficient by sixty five thousand six hundred seven dollars and seventy nine cents mm -hmm. so we're at asking to make that full with county yeah. funds. Yeah. I apologize for the confusion. Yeah. I, no, I think no, of it in terms of two different buckets of money, no, right. but it really, it's but one. In, but internally, one. to you, yes. it is. And that's, yes, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Two different programs, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily think we need to make a habit of trying to help with state funding, but in this instance, I think it's a good idea, so. Yeah, we do as well. There's, you know, seven lots that are retiring, right. and we feel like there's plenty of preservation to, to come from that area. So we're hoping to, to keep the conflicts of the residential development down. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. I'll okay. move that the uh, Board of Commissioners grant approval to the transfer of county funds not to exceed the amount of $65,607.79 to purchase an agriculture easement through the mouth program for the Red Properties LLC farm located 5140. Grand Valley Drive, Westminster. I think that's in District 1. That is in District 1. <laughs> <laughs> You're too Westminster. slow. What? Really, a Westminster address? And I said Westminster. Second. There you go. <laughs> I thought I could make the motion since it said Westminster, but it's not even any court clues. Okay, I have a motion. I do have a second. Finally, a little bit delay, but we did get a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Appreciate your help. Yep. I'm Absolutely. picking up my bow from the tech this afternoon, getting ready for the season. All right. Keep practicing. I need all the practice I can get. Okay, we're going to uh, move into our 
administrative session, but before we do, public comment. Uh, sir? We have uh, Mr. Greg Fullerton, if you'll come to the microphone. And, and the idea is uh, please share your uh, name, address, and you have a few minutes to share what's on your mind. Good morning, gentlemen. My name is uh, Greg Fullerton. I live at 1430 South Pleasant Valley Road here in Westminster. Uh, Long-time Carroll County resident. I grew up in Woodbine. Graduated from South Carroll, moved out to New Windsor, and now I live in Pleasant Valley, obviously. What, what was your address again, Mr. Fuller? 1430, 14. South Pleasant Valley. Okay. Um, we moved out to Pleasant Valley in 2004. Uh, I love it there. It's been a great, quiet area, ball resort and all that stuff. It's, it's outstanding. It's exactly how I remember Woodbine being when I was a kid. I bought a second home there. I own two houses on Pleasant Valley Road now. Um, one I rent to tenants as a retirement project. Uh, as many of you guys probably already know, we have Island Green, they call it Family Fun Center. That used to be true. Uh, a couple of years back, they applied for an alcohol license, which I had no, no problems with at all. Uh, I'm a Marine Corps veteran, a small business owner, and a firefighter. So I have no problem with people trying to promote their business, make more money. It's all uh, a great situation. So I never came to that hearing because that was no issues with me when they had 50 to 100 people there driving golf balls in a quiet center. I, as many residents I've talked with all feel the exact same. However, now it's a full-blown rock concert every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from May to October. So almost every single nice day of the year now on the weekend it's a rock concert. If not rock, it's country or something like that. But it's a full-blown concert. They built a stage that faces the neighborhood. From Route 40, you can see it. It faces directly at the houses. One of those houses is my tenants, a house I bought probably three years ago for them. It literally sounds like a bass cannon inside their house. Like you, you would have to turn the TV up to compete with these speakers. Um, if you could. I guess to describe it, if you had like that annoying neighborhood person that drives around with a loud thumping stereo in their car, picture parking that in your driveway Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from May to October. You cannot open your windows anymore because you will hear that nonstop. It's, uh, it's pretty outrageous. I've, I've measured it decibel wise. My personal house at 1430 is about three quarter mile from that stage. And at 9.58 p.m. two weeks ago, it was 75 decibels at my house in a guitar solo at the end of the night. So ordinarily, I wouldn't be here for any pet peeve little things. But this affects my retirement, because if you take the value of these homes and you depreciate them by, say, $50,000 a piece, there's approximately 200 houses in this area. $50,000 times 200 is $10 million to the residents of uh, Pleasant Valley. So it's a pretty serious issue. I've worked very hard my whole life uh, to pay for these houses, to get this money from my family. Um, got some notes here. I'm just trying to make sure I don't miss things. Oh, and that, that property is not commercial. It's not industrial. That's, it's in a residential agricultural area. There is no commercial area in that area. Uh, there was no postings I ever saw for speakers or concerts or anything. And I asked all the residents in that area, and they said the same. There's also a church, so the decibel lowers. The decibel meter should be lower. There's a church that borders that property right at the top of the hill. So it's only allowed 50 to 55 decibels, I think it is. I'm fairly familiar with the uh, noise ordinance as I've been studying it since this has been going on. A lot of the, I see my time's up, sorry. That's okay. Keep a going. lot of the residents wanted to come, but as you know, most people work on Thursday. It's very hard to get here. So it's actually taken me some time to figure out where to go, when to go, to, to come in front of you gentlemen today. And ladies, sorry. Uh, but I appreciate your time, and hopefully, uh, hopefully that can be addressed. I don't, I don't. I've talked to the sheriff also, and he says he doesn't have no, noise decibel meters. So I've just been using a cell phone app, but it's way, it's it's above the noise decibel limit inside my rental house with the windows closed at times. So it's it's pretty obnoxious. And I don't I don't know how to describe it better, but you'd have to be there. But you got to be there at 9 p.m. on a on a. This is a good weekend because this is a holiday party. Usually on holidays, the traffic's lined up from their place all the way out around the corner and down 140. You can't even get in my road sometimes. You've got to drive an oncoming traffic on South Pleasant Valley to get in there and around the corner. 
that's that's how many people they pack in there. Like the the entire field is full. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. And uh, personally, thank you for your service. Thank you, sir. Cool. Appreciate it. <clears throat> so, just for the record, this has been an ongoing issue uh, or challenge, if you will. So I we we do have I do have several uh, several results. At, as it pertains to visits that have been made by some of our departments. I can certainly share that with you, you guys, um, and we'll see, you know, we'll see what we can do here. Um, you know, there's, without getting, we can't debate it today, obviously, because it's not on our agenda, which you understand. Uh, but I've heard from quite a few folks out there, and I believe you and I have met because uh, at, at some point, um, at, I'm sure we have, sir. Yeah. So, so I'm right around the corner from there as well. Uh, so it, it is it is a challenge, but I'll I'll get I'll make sure that everything that's been done there to this point is shared with everyone here, and then perhaps we can uh, get it on some sort of agenda somewhere to discuss what what the situation is. I think we have a larger issue. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, law enforcement has been there. Uh, liquor board has been there. Uh, planning and zoning has been there. The health department's been there, uh, and all four, or f I may have missed one, have, have submitted reports on exactly what is, where, where it's come from, what happened. So I'll get that. Sure. Yeah, I'll get that all together okay. and, and get it to all of you. Yeah, and I think okay. I think it is definitely valuable to have a put on the agenda because it is bigger, and we've been we've been dancing yeah. around this for a while. So yeah, and I and you know I brought up about the noise ordinance. Yeah. Uh, several months ago mm -hmm. and we're getting there I think but that needs to be back on yeah. needs to be on our agenda as well yeah uh, because it, our noise ordinance at best is is I don't know it, it's not it doesn't it, it it doesn't really get into the meat of what a noise ordinance is supposed to be it is very generic and Tim I know you and your office have done some work on that we're, we're, we're we're getting there, and I had asked for a comparison of, of neighboring jurisdictions mm -hmm. on what their noise ordinance says when it comes to decibel levels and what have you. Um, so we need to, right. we, maybe we can package that all together, mm -hmm. use this as an example, mm -hmm. and get it on our agenda to talk about it. Yeah. Um, it, it it's, a, it's a growing issue, not only here, but everywhere. Yeah. And you know, some, I know there's a winery in, in the county that has taken it upon themselves to purchase noise uh, meters and put them on the perimeter of their property and regularly take uh, uh, readings to ensure that they're not exceeding. But that's a little different because that, in, that venue uses acoustic, it's typically one person bands. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, I mean, there was a tribute band to Journey or somebody a couple weeks back and I need to be I don't we can't get into it today but my daughter lives on Hughes Shop Road and I was sitting in her driveway and I could have been in the third row mm -hmm. but so, you like Journey though right yeah I did <laughs> I mean a couple songs but it's anyway. what we allow not particularly the noise it's deeper, it's much yeah it's easier. there's more to it so so I appreciate all of the citizens and you can certainly share this with them uh, we're on it. Sometimes it takes a little while to get everything together, uh, but, but I haven't just let it go. We've done a, a ton of, of investigations there by various departments, so more to come. So it hasn't uh, I'll get your like contact information uh, today, sir, and I'll reach back out to you personally. Okay, thanks, sir. I do appreciate your replies because I, I have seen the email change. Okay. Yeah. You have replied. Thank you. Okay. It, it hasn't gone on deaf ears. <laughs> I'm just asking. But if it did, no so, one would have a problem. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, Commissioner Fraser, did thank, you want to? Thank you for you taking the time to say to something. Or no? Yeah, this is also a problem with some of the the venues that are have a limited license for like just a couple times a year. They can do something, as I've heard from some people live around those areas too. Yeah. That the noise is too it goes beyond whatever their their license says, like the ten o'clock, eleven o'clock. It goes a little bit beyond that, or then this happens, that happens too loud. So all of this does have to be looked into because uh, why well, I, I I'm all for it trying to, to let these people make some money and bring people in and so forth is good for the county but you have to be uh, 
cognizant of the neighbors that live around mm -hmm. you as well. Right. I mean, they didn't, you know, buy the house next to a, a rock concert, basically, mm -hmm. to use your term, <laughs> next to a rock mm -hmm. concert. So we do have to look into this a little more, not just for this area, but everywhere in the county, especially where you had those limited uh, licenses that are for like 12 events a year, whatever mm -hmm. it's for. I can't remember the exact number because I've gotten a few few calls about that as well. Yeah. Okay. We just don't seem to have the okay. to, to, to do too much about right. it right now. Yeah, we need to take okay. noise ordinance so to we'll, the dentist. Yeah, I, yeah. I hear you. So okay. I, again, I appreciate uh, you coming forward, sir, and uh, you know, as you can tell, we're we're aware and we're going to do something. So. Thank you. I appreciate that. This has been a very informative experience. Yep. Learning how this works. But prior to this, I had no idea. That's right. I don't know how it works either, so don't worry about it. <laughs> so, uh, but we are uh, now. Um, Chris, Mr. Swam, do we have any uh, public comment on the lines? I have no one waiting for public comment, sir. <laughs> okay. Uh, we are now uh, in open admin. Does anybody up here have anything they want to share? <clears throat> Yeah, they're about putting something on the agenda in a later date to or bring to our attention. Um, the only thing I have is I, I know we pretty much, well, two things. Um, I got an email from a constituent that regularly uses our senior centers, and I know that we had put out a press release, mm -hmm. and that press relief release was on in the Carroll County Times two weeks later, yeah. which is interesting. Um, but we all know that the Carroll County Times is typically the Baltimore Sun now, so that's the way it rolls. Okay. So you're going to get things in the Carroll County Times that are a week later. Okay. Um, but I don't know, did we ever put out an additional bit yeah. of information on how we tweaked the, 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 the things at the senior centers? No. I mean, the, the folks using the senior centers have all, you know, been told. Okay. That, um, so it didn't seem, you know, so late. It didn't seem necessary but okay well I, I only asked that maybe we could I don't think we need to put a press release out no but, but if you see value in putting you know but, getting Chris and swam and somebody to publish something why not yeah maybe on our website under yeah. senior centers or I don't know yeah. just to say okay you can play pickleball you just have to have a mask on or you can I play cards resolved all this yeah, yeah. But, but I don't think but, apparently not everyone knows about right. it through the great box news well, no. maybe just something. I don't Sir. think we need to do a full-blown yeah. press release, but I do think we need to just make sure that, that we put something out for mm -hmm. our seniors that don't regularly attend or right. whatever. So okay. if we could do that, I'd appreciate yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And also, are we still going with everything virtual, or are we going to provide a hybrid method moving forward for our meetings? And I bring that up because P and Z is coming up uh, in – September the 21st or something, I believe, for this the next meeting. Um, it's actual. Could, it's not virtual. No, I thought we decided that everything was virtual until further notice. Mm, really? No. We, so it, 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 room size determines whether it should be virtual huh. or, or, you know, so you're trying to keep, you know, folks, the, the what the board decided several weeks ago was, um, you know, all based on how many people you could put in the room. Mm -hmm. So okay. um, if you can properly distance in a room then you can have an actual meeting in person if you can't then um, then they're virtual so okay it's a, it's a case by case basis. yeah it's a it's a juggling act I get mm -hmm. that but maybe but it, we could maybe make sure folks know because last night at the end of PNZ they're like so are we virtual or are we not hmm. oh. and Linda gave the answer that we're virtual and then I went like this and they went well, wait a minute and yeah. I went well yeah. so if we could just drill down on exactly what we're doing. PZ is a problem because mm -hmm. I don't really think without barriers that you can sit eight people at the dais yeah. down there. Twice that's twice tough. Down. You can't. They're, right. That's why Period. they will probably remain virtual. They're just too big a group. And right. then, they, then they have, um, you know, lots of people through. There's a lot of throughput frequently in right. their meetings, well, not always, you know, especially their regular meetings. Maybe there's a way to... to Put a couple at the dais and a couple on right. the sides or something. I don't know. There's got to be a way to do it. I know it's, you know, Chris and everybody has to look at the Swami. I'm talking. Yeah, about. I know. I mean, uh, kind of the way we're set up here, where yeah, it, you know. they have barriers, but the 
dais isn't a whole lot longer than this, right. and there are nine people. Oh, no, I know, I understand, mission. but there may be a way to modify the room to allow for people present. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm just asking. Uh, take a look. To, to give it the benefit of the doubt, let's see if we can do it. There is sure. so much benefit to getting back into into to face to face. So if there's a way that we can put up a couple desks or something down there and pull the cameras back or something, mm -hmm. I know the Swami's probably throwing stuff at the screen right now. I, I heard it. And when I walk out the door, he's going to attack me. I know it's going to happen. You it's got been my nice, back, right? It's been he's nice working. working with you. What? <laughs> Flip a coin. <laughs> If we, we could just, we'll, we'll look at they're, they're probably the only ones. Maybe they, BZ too. No, no, no BZ BZ's is working present. fine in person because yeah. there are five yeah. of them. And they okay. can separate yeah. around. Well, maybe we, we can could separate them. I mean, and liquor board has no problem either. It's yeah. the planning commission just has two. I know. People. Maybe we could put some desks on the sides right. or something. To oh, get, we'll look yeah. at it. Okay. Okay. That's that's all. It, if Anything I may, else? yeah. Well, he uh, Commissioner Wance has mentioned citizen services, and. Commissioner Rothstein had mentioned the withdrawal of Afghanistan. I'm not a veteran, but it's my understanding that this has been a very, very stressful time for our veterans. That there's the mental health issues, suicide nationally can potentially spike. And I want to make sure that the resources that we have in this county available to our veterans are publicized, that there's a public awareness, that we do have the resources for them, and that please turn to our citizen services for help with that issue and anything we can do you know Colonel Rothstein is a, a strong advocate of this you can reach out to him on his email and contact him if you need any help sometimes it's a very very personal issue and I'm sure they'd like to have someone that they identify with and I'm very grateful for his leadership on this issue and I'll make sure all the veterans out there in our community know that we are there for you and we will provide the resources necessary to help you in this time of need so thank you always and there are 18 suicides a day with our veterans and um, we have three veteran support officers in our county in uh, Department of Citizen Services we have case manager uh, I want to say expertise but trained to do what's right um, I do know that uh, our citizen service outreach is doing a great job working with a lot of folks whether it's those that are in the detention center uh, or those uh, in hospitals, um, anywhere in the community. And you're absolutely right. You can reach out to me along with any of us, and we'll point you in the right directions. Um, so, yeah, this is – it's not going to get easier. I'll put it that way. I, I don't believe. Um, so no, – uh, It's getting better, isn't it? Huh? Because I remember – doing the push-ups last year. It was year. 22. It was 22, and now it's down to 18, <laughs> which is still well, way too many, but it's a step in the right direction. Okay, yes. It, it was a 22 push-up challenge, right. and now the numbers are 18, but... Uh, I could yeah, actually yeah. maybe do the challenge now. I don't think you can. <laughs> maybe on your knees. So, uh, <laughs> okay, what else? Put it down to single digits. Um, I'm in, baby. <laughs> anything else? Uh, the only uh, last comment I have is I started off social media... Um, I just, you know, for open admin and just to, to finish off, minimize social media. There's a value to what it provides, but there's a challenge when it, you know, somebody, I think, Dick, you mentioned the hatred going on, and there's this black and white attitude, you know, and uh, there's all this gray area, <laughs> and the social media doesn't pick up the gray area. They pick up the black and the white. So, uh we are all available, and I just want to make sure we continue to promote ourselves as being all available uh, to the community and keep social media at bay on what it can and cannot provide. But that's all I have. Um, let's go right into agendas, Wanda. We got minutes still. We have closed oh. minutes still. Oh, I apologize. Yeah, we have uh, closed minutes. Yeah. Approval of minutes, I believe. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, where am I at? Need to approve the minutes of. Uh, land yep, August 26th, uh, land acquisition. I'll, I'll move to accept those minutes. Second. Okay, I got a motion and a second of the land acquisition minutes on August 26th. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I'll abstain. You were not here, were you? No. Right. I'll okay. abstain due to yep. the fact got that it. I wasn't there. Okay. Although I agree with it, I wasn't there. Okay. So it's a 401. Four, Four and one 
extension. So now, Miss Wanda. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So September 6th, the county offices will be closed, and I did see a press release on that for Labor Day. Uh, Tuesday, we have nothing, but again, Lashna Tova to all those celebrating. On Wednesday at 9.30, Commissioner Weaver will be attending the Farm Museum's Advisory Board meeting, and then he'll be attending is, are you attending that, or is Commissioner yeah. Wentz? Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Wentz lost the coin flip, but he won't acknowledge it. <laughs> so that's so, I would be going. I think there was something going on. Okay, the I think it was a double head coin, but uh, I do too. So Commissioner Weaver will be attending the Board of Education board meeting at 5 p.m. on Wednesday, the 8th. On Thursday, we have closed, <coughs> and then at 9 a.m. we go into open. Uh, request approval to apply for a grant funding through. The Edward Byrne Justice Assistance Grant Program. It's a uh, Youth and Victim Services Grant. Option to purchase the Wolfred S. Hoff Sr. and Deborah Muse property through our County Ag Preservation Program. <coughs> uh, Public Safety Training Center PFAS Initial Site Analysis. Mr. Hein will be providing that. Then we will go into closed with Public Works. Uh, talking about land, uh, building acquisition, just leave it at that. <clears throat> 2 p.m. Standard Solar Site visit. Commissioner Boucher will be attending up in Union Bridge, uh, along with uh, a congressional delegation. Is that um, Congressman or Senator? You know? Well, they have the Congressman Rask, and they're tentatively waiting here back from Cardin and. Uh, okay. In Holland. Yeah. So, any of my colleagues want to join me at that? I'd sincerely appreciate it. It's an honor to have those dignitaries coming into our county. I'd be interested in finding out a little bit more information about it, and if because I'm all about solar. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. So, most likely, I would like to join you with that. that that'd be absolutely wonderful. I, th I think it shows unity in us as commissioners too to have more than just one. So, I appreciate the support. Yeah. So, if you could add my name to that, and then okay. uh, yes. we'll get together, and, and you can tell me a little bit more about it. Okay. Okay. Okay, on Friday, September 8th, Commissioner Wentz will be eating at the 20 Town Business Breakfast. That's, uh, that's actually a tribute as well to uh, the past economic director of 20 Town, Nancy yeah. McCormick. So, okay. Um, that's, and I think it's at 7 a.m. instead of 8. It starts seven. at 7. Okay. Yeah. Don't ask me how I'm going to get there, Wanda, at 7, <laughs> but it starts at 7. Especially when you You might want to call me and get me the plate. <laughs> <laughs> You brag about their food too, don't you? Oh, it, seriously, incredible food at Thunderhead Bowling in Tawny Town. Who would I ever guessed? And then Commissioner Wance will be having a walking tour, I imagine, with the mayor, uh, Wance, as well, in yeah. Tawny Town. It's going to be the um, Wance show. Then there'll be a grand opening at the Basin Swim Academy, and Commissioner Weaver will be attending up in uh, Finksburg. You guys want to dive in with me? I was going to ask you if you were going to get in the water. <laughs> you're going you're to have like some sort of a oh. something on. So Remember I, Mayor yeah, Schaefer go there. with yes. the ducky yeah. and old outfit? Yeah. I think that he's he's all show up that way. <clears throat> <laughs> on Saturday, September 11th, uh, as mentioned earlier, CC Visa, 9-11 uh, 20th anniversary ceremony. Uh, Commissioner Frazier, myself, Commissioner Wance and Weaver will be attending. Then Remembrance Day. At VFW Post 467, uh, Commissioner Weaver will be attending. And the 90th anniversary banquet up at Pleasant Valley Community Fire Hall, and Commissioner Wentz will be attending that day. On Sunday, Commissioner Wentz has the podcast, and then a Out of the Darkness walk at Crimble Park. Commissioner Boucher and Frazier with his knee braces will be walking. <laughs> On Boy, Monday, September 13th, Transit Advisory Council, uh, I guess location, is that the TBD? I don't know. I see TBD there, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be virtual or live. I think that's okay. what it is. Okay, and Commissioner Frazier will be uh, participating in that. Crisis Support Food Pantry, uh, a new location opening up down in Mount Airy. Commissioner Boucher will be attending. 
uh, that evening on the 13th. On Tuesday, <clears throat> we have a joint meeting with the delegation. It will be a uh, hybrid, so it'll be both in person and, uh, okay. you know, virtual. Um, and then I'll be attending the Ag Center board meeting that evening at 7 p.m. On Wednesday, the 15th, Seniors Expo at the Ag, at the Ag Center? No. I thought it was at uh, South Carroll. No, no. no. Senior, Senior Expo is at the Ag Center. Yeah. Is it at the Ag Center? Yeah. Okay. At the Ag Center, we'll all be attending that. Well, I'm not sure we all will. Flip the page. Oh, okay. Well, maybe not. Uh, is that in person? Yes. Oh. Is it really? I think they're going to try. Okay. So even if it's virtual, yeah. Uh, well, if, if it's virtual, we can get there. If it's virtual, you can do the, the open ceremony. And then we'll right. have to skedaddle. But they're working on maybe. Okay. So we'll see. Okay. At 11 a.m., the uh, Mako Interim Legislative Committee, where oh, no. Commissioner Frazier and Wentz will skedaddle or scoot down there. We'll figure out what they're going to do. I hope uh, we're driving. They're scooting no, allowed. Scoot. You scoot well, it depends if it's virtual. They, they also are talking about possibly not having it that day. I just remembered. So more to come on that. That's tentative. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Put a big T beside did, that. Did you get that all, Wanda? Okay. Okay. I did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're about the only one because I didn't. So at 4 p.m., uh, Fast Signs Ribbon Cutting down Westminster. Commissioner Frazier will be attending. I'll be back by the way, And then Commissioner oh, yeah. Wentz. Even if we go, yeah. Commissioner like Wance will be attending the Board of Trustees meeting at the Carroll Community College that af late afternoon. You can add me to the fast signs ribbon cutter <coughs> because fast I kind of know that guy and I think okay. I'll be there. He said okay. not to let you come. Okay. He did? <laughs> <laughs> On Thursday the 16th, uh, we have public hearing focused on the pension plan changes and then uh, FY22 overtime grant awards uh, dealing with the sheriff's department and nothing else scheduled on Thursday the 16th and that is also Yom Kippur so wishing everyone a good Yom Tov during that day and a healthy fast on Friday the 17th nothing Saturday nothing and really looking forward to the 19th with Commissioner Weaver's podcast did I miss anything what I never look forward to yours Blah blah blah. <laughs> I'm hurt. Two minutes to go. I'm I hurt. thought it was going to be ten thirty. I'm hurt. Okay. Does anybody have anything else? Okay. With that, hearing none, do I have a motion to adjourn Maybe for the day? Second. Wait. Are we going into closed or no? Yeah. No. Okay. I got a motion. I got a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. Five zero. We're adjourned.